So back in April, I had a baby. It is April 12th, Tuesday, 5.52 a.m. My induction is scheduled for 6 a.m. in eight minutes. I had a good hearty breakfast because I think once I get to the hospital, I don't think they're going to have me eat. So I had a full breakfast and now we're headed out to the hospital. Okay, we're doing a quick room tour. This is the entrance door. There's the sink. And this big area. Area for the baby. Your own bathroom with shower. All the monitors. The bed. Comes with a man. The peanut ball. There's a closet. And another like ball thing. Since uh, it's 7.30 right now, I got settled into the room. I guess they changed shifts at 7.30, so I had the night shift nurse and the resident just now. I hooked up to the IV, on the monitor, baby's on the monitor. They just inserted some medication um, called Cytotec and also put in a Foley to dilate the cervix. And they're going to check back in four hours. So after getting situated, they started the induction process right away. They started with ripening the cervix using a medication called Cytotec and also a cervical balloon. So a cervical balloon is basically a catheter with an inflatable balloon on one end. So you insert it and you inflate the balloon and the one end of the balloon basically sits on the inside of the cervix, which helps to ripen the cervix. I was also given a medication, a type of prostaglandin called Cytotec, which helps to ripen the cervix. It is 10 o'clock right now. The medication and the catheter is definitely doing something because I'm feeling contractions. And they're pretty uncomfortable, but they're not regular. It just kind of comes and goes, I guess, intermittent. It feels like you're like being squeezed inside. This is hour number five, around 11.40 right now. Just sitting up because I feel uncomfortable with contractions. But I'm gonna have a little jelly juice thing. I can still have clears. And I think honestly sitting up feels a little better than lying down because lying down I felt like I couldn't move. Like all tangled up, but I feel like feel a little more freedom sitting up. No epidural yet. They're actually talking about starting Pitocin, which is like a synthetic form of oxytocin to help with your contractions. So that's, that's coming next. The second procedure they did is starting a medication called Pitocin, which is a form of oxytocin which helps to contract your uterus. And it's supposed to really speed up the labor process, um, but I still felt like I was sitting around and waiting for things to happen for a while. It is about 2 p.m., about seven and a half hours in to my stay. The cook catheter, like the balloon, just came out and my doctor just examined me and she said I was about three centimeters dilated. And the exams are so uncomfortable. She feels like she's shoving her whole fist in there. She's now having me lie on my side with this ball that looks like a peanut. It's supposed to help keep the pelvis open and help the baby come down in like the right way. The contractions are painful but I'm gonna wait just maybe a couple hours until the epidural. plan is to get it before they rupture my membrane unless the membrane just ruptures on its own. What's your pain level right now? I mean, without contractions, it's more just like uncomfortable feeling. It's like being like having wires everywhere um, and like not being able to reach for things. But with the contraction, it's like, like a good seven. I don't know. But I don't want to say it's like a seven because... What if something harder comes later on? What if on? something a lot more painful happens later on? <laughs> and then I'm like at 12. <laughs> and you know, I have to readjust my whole scale, so. As far as how it's been, it's about seven. So seven and a half hours in, did you think it was gonna be this long? I mean, I expected it to take a long time. Seven and a half hours, I feel like, I feel like I'm on a standard timeline. I, I don't feel like I'm like behind or ahead of the curve or anything, but I hope that things do move faster. 
so that we don't do this for another 24 hours. Maybe I'll feel better after epidural. Epidural is a really personal choice, so a lot of people ask me how I felt about it before going to the hospital. Uh, for me personally, I asked for my epidural about an hour before amniotomy or a procedure where they rupture your membrane. It's commonly known as breaking your water. And I asked for about an hour before because once they break your water, your contractions can get a lot stronger. It is now 5 p.m. I've been here 11 and a half hours. No, 10 and a half hours. A lot happened in the last hour or so. got my epidural, so my legs are numb my right one more than my left. Uh, my doctor came in, broke my water. She said it was, it was clear fluid, which is good. Um, and then they put a Foley in me since I can't go to the bathroom now. So now I'm in bed, but I'm actually pretty comfortable after the epidural. So I feel pretty good. So this is my epidural. This is connected to my catheter and it's pumping medication, pain medication, I guess, into my back. And then I also have an extra button in case I need more pain medicine. I don't know where it is right now, but it's somewhere around here. Are you like accidentally pressing it? <laughs> well, it's this. Okay. This is my pain button if I need more pain. But I feel pretty comfortable now, so. Did you have a lot of pain without the epidural? I didn't realize how uncomfortable I was until I got the epidural and I became more comfortable. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, obviously some like discomfort is expected, um, but now I feel like I'm just lying in bed and nothing's happening. Last time my doctor checked me, she said I was four, I forgot, three or four, four centimeters I think. Um, it's 8.45 right now, so I've been here approximately 14 hours. My doctor just came. It's a different doctor now. It's a nighttime doctor. And just check me. I'm 7 centimeters dilated. It looks like I'm making good progress. I was worried that I wouldn't get to 7. Now the next goal is 10. And then we can start pushing for the baby. And what time do you think 10 would be? So the doctor's going to come back and check in, like two, three hours, then hopefully at that point it'll be 10, or if I start to feel anything different, I think I can call them in to check again. So far, so good. How are you feeling? Kind of tired, pain's manageable still. There was like a mom who was screaming. Right before. next door. Like next door, she was like screaming in pain. That was a little scary. It was <laughs> <But> pretty concerning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, it sounded bad, um, but not, it's like a person dependent thing, not everyone's screams like that, at least from what I've seen, so I'm not much of a screamer, <laughs> but we'll see. After that last clip, things moved pretty fast. Um, as I got more dilated, my contractions became stronger and more painful, and right as we were getting ready to push, I started to get these crazy chills and shaking. I wasn't feeling cold necessarily, but I just had a hard time really controlling my body with the shaking and chills, which I heard is a pretty common phenomenon. At about 10.22, I was 9.5 centimeters dilated, and at 10.40, I was fully dilated at 10 centimeters, and I started pushing. We barely had any time to film anything, and before we knew it, we had our baby at 12.07 a.m., about 18 hours after starting the induction process. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I pushed for about an hour and 20 minutes. Overall, had a really positive, good experience, and our baby is so cute. So cute. <laughs> first meal, first meal in how many hours? I ate around 5.30 a.m. A.m. 21 hours, 21 and a half. Mm -hmm. This is the best McDonald's I've ever had. My options were limited. I thought I was gonna want sushi, and I do. But there's no sushi restaurant but open right no now. There's no sushi restaurants open right now at 1.30 or about 2 a.m. right now. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So that was my labor and delivery experience. I feel super lucky that everything went smoothly and we didn't have any major complications. So after staying at the hospital for another night, we got to take our baby home. And since then, it's been a life-changing experience. And I'm super excited to share my new life with the baby with you guys. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.